Hello and welcome back to another video. In this one we will take a look at one of my favorite tech products of the past few years. The GPD Pocket. Actually we will take a look at both generations of GPD Pocket. The GPD Pocket, like the name suggests, is a pocket-sized laptop or UMPC. It features an x86 Intel CPU, runs Windows, has a 7-inch touchscreen and a somewhat normal keyboard. So now let's start with a little unboxing. I have owned the first generation GPD Pocket since about 2018 and the second generation for like half a year now. So I had enough time to compare them and tell you what I think about both. Both pockets come with a leather case to protect the devices, for example when they are thrown into a backpack. The boxes they come in also feel quite nice, but the first generation box feels a bit higher quality. The rest is very similar. Both come in thin plastic bags and have a cloth sheet to protect the screen. They also come with the same power brick, which can deliver up to 2 amps at 12 volts. Let's compare the actual hardware. The Pocket 2 is a bit thinner but actually feels and looks way thinner since it has a curved bottom case like a MacBook Air. On this side both pockets have a USB 3.0 Type-A port and a 3.5mm headphone jack. The first generation pocket has a micro HDMI for video out and a USB-C for data, charging and also video out. The Pocket 2 also features a Type-C port for data, charging and video out, but it's on the other side. It even has a charging LED, which is super handy. On that side there is also another USB Type-A port. But strangely, this one is upside down when compared to the other side. The Pocket 1 has nothing on its other side. But the most important change between the Pocket 1 and 2 for me is the microSD card slot. With this I could double the storage, triple or even quadruple it, which is what I plan on doing. It's amazing. On the inside, the Pocket 2 features a 7-inch 1920x1200 IPS touchscreen. The hinge on the Pocket 2 goes back a bit further, which I like for thumb typing. Speaking of which, personally the keyboard is the perfect size for my hands. I used it on many occasions and it worked really well for its small size. The only gripe I had is that the first generation Pocket has shift keys on both sides, whereas the Pocket 2 does not. This is a bit annoying for thumb typing, so I remapped the question mark button as a shift button. As a mouse replacement alongside the touchscreen, the original Pocket has a ThinkPad style knob which works really well if you have one hand free, but not while both hands hold a device, like for example when thumb typing. The placement of the mouse buttons and the split spacebar is also a bit problematic. On the Pocket 2 there is a capacitive pad like on the old Blackberries. At first I did not like this at all. This was even the reason I purchased the Pocket 1 when the second generation was already out. But I have to say now owning it, I think it's better than the knob. More precise and easier to use. Also perfect for handheld use. Also perfect for handheld use is the mouse buttons on the left side of the device. Now let's power them on and take a look at boot times. The Pocket 2's LCD lit up first. Now the first generation Pocket followed. The GPD logo also seems to have changed between the generations. The light bleed of the Pocket 2 does not really happen in person. It's probably because of the camera angle. In person both screens look about the same. I would even say they look like the same panel. Wow and after only 25 seconds the Pocket 2 is booted up.
the Pocket 1 took about a minute to start. For our next test we can take a look at the performance of opening and playing back a YouTube video. The loading of the YouTube page was ok on the Pocket 1. Not super fast, but definitely bearable. Let's look at this video, it seems like a cool topic. The loading of the video was actually quite slow. Let's crank it up to 1080p and look at the resource utilization. About 40% CPU usage. Now let's look at the full screen mode. Wow, that was unbelievably slow. The GPU also seems to be more utilized now. Now to the Pocket 2. The search page is loading way faster. Let's also turn it up to 1080p and make the video full screen. As we can see, the CPU and GPU usage are well below 10%. Impressive for such a small device. Next, let's try some real performance benchmarks with Cinebench R23. We can see 4 squares on both screens here, since the Pocket 1 has a quad-core CPU without hyperthreading, while the Pocket 2 has two cores with hyperthreading. The original GPD Pocket used here has a X7 Z8750 Intel Atom CPU, while the Pocket 2 uses an Intel Core M3 8100Y. Both feature 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. The Pocket 2's CPU features two low-power Kaby Lake cores, whereas the Pocket 1 only features Atom cores, which are way slower. I wanted to make a timer for this, but both devices took so long that my recording already stopped when they finished. Both took over 10 minutes, but the Pocket 1 took way longer. For single core performance, the Pocket 1 took over an hour. At the end, it achieved 171 points in single core and 720 in multi core. The Pocket 2 came in at 1163 points multicore and 653 single core. Using Crystal Disk Mark, I wanted to test the speed of the internal flash storage of the two pockets. Both of these devices use slow eMMC storage, but the Pocket 2 uses a faster type. Let's see if this translates to better benchmark results. <laughs> wow, so yeah, the Pocket 2 is a good bit faster, but still actually only about as fast as a good USB 3 stick. But in day-to-day -day usage, disk access on the Pocket 2 feels okay. On the first generation Pocket, there are often very long loading times. Next, I wanted to try GTA San Andreas, which is one of my favorite games. For some reason, on the Pocket 1, my version of GTA wouldn't start while capturing, so you just have to believe the screenshots here. The FPS was between 13 and 22 with some stutters. Let's see how it runs on the Pocket 2. I used the same settings for this, I put everything on max except anti-aliasing. Ok, let's go! This is actually the same GTA instance I used in the Apple TV eGPU video and the one I used for the development of GTA mods back in the day. Damn, this game just brings back memories. So we are running at 25 FPS, which is the FPS this version is locked to. But there are areas where we drop down to 20. I always love the rideable train in GTA San Andreas. It's sad that you have to install a mod to do the same on GTA 5. So yeah, GTA works well on the Pocket 2. The next game I tried is one of my childhood favorites. A World of Warcraft clone from 2008. I played this game so much back in the day with my friends, it was crazy. Since then, occasionally I look into the community and play on a private server. This one is called Fornova. So let's try if this game can run on a pocketable device. The settings were maxed when I tried it on the first generation pocket, since it's not really that demanding today. Oof. It might be playable, but barely. 
stutters and FPS under 20 most of the time are not really that great for an MMO. After playing a bit, I noticed that the GPU might not even be the bottleneck here, since changing the settings to low only helped a little bit with performance. So now to the Pocket 2. I used the same settings of course. Right out of the gate, the FPS is way higher, mostly in the 40s. No tearing and way more playable. This is something I could actually enjoy. And I did. After recording that footage, I played 4 Story on the Pocket 2 many times. But now to the real question, can it run Crisis? I used the demo version from 2007 for the tests, as I don't own a retail copy of the game. So for the original GPD Pocket, the answer is yes, but it ain't fun. With frame rates under 20 and massive stutters, I wouldn't want to play Crisis like this. You could say it was a crisis. So let's look at the Pocket 2. This was actually playable. With frame rates over 30, I could actually enjoy this. To conclude, I love both devices. I watched ads for the Sony Vio P as a kid and thought it was the coolest thing ever. I even bought an Acer Aspire 1 netbook at some point because of my love for small PCs. So when GPD announced the first Pocket, I knew I had to get one. I will probably install Linux on the first generation Pocket, since it often feels too slow on Windows. But the Pocket 2 is a great little machine, especially for late 90s and early 2000s retro gaming in a portable device. Let me know what you would do with a GPD Pocket or if you even own one. If you liked this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, for example, hackintoshing the Pockets, Consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.